everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the men's thermal beanie, uh, which you can see here in the photo. I also have my sample one here to show you. I'll pull back a little bit so you can see. This is the men's thermal beanie. Uh, it is crocheted using a stitch called the thermal stitch, which creates a very thick uh, and uh, heavy weight uh, fabric um, that's quite dense, quite solid, making it very, very warm. It does have a bit of stretch to it as well, uh, which is why it's working quite well in this crochet beanie. Um, now it is uh, worked in a lighter weight yarn. I'm using a Superwash Merino yarn by Lion Brand. It has that number three on the label. This is a 100% wool. Now because I'm working it in a lighter weight yarn, it means it's not going to be too thick to wear and it's quite comfortable. This uh, hat does not have a brim and it's a very snug fitting beanie uh, and it's uh, sized to fit an adult uh, I've called it the men's thermal beanie, but uh, it can be for women as well. Now, for this pattern, you're going to need two colors of a lightweight yarn. Again, I'm using the Superwash Merino by Lion Brand Yarn, and you're going to need about 150 yards of each color. The hat is reversible, which is kind of neat because of the nature of this stitch, and, uh, and just uh, a pleasure to wear. Along with your yarn, you're also going to need a four millimeter crochet hook and also a stitch marker. I found a stitch marker is quite useful uh, when working this stitch and you'll see why as we get going on the pattern. So a stitch marker, four millimeter hook, and also the written pattern, which is free on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. In the description of this video, you will find the links there for the hooks, uh, the yarn, and as well the direct link to the free pattern on my blog. So thank you so much for joining me and while you're here don't forget to subscribe and uh, I love to see your finished work so if you happen to make the beanie be sure to share it with me, tag me on social media and, um, and uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Now our hat pattern today is worked in rounds and we're working from the brim up to the top so what we're going to do is start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain. Your foundation chain needs to be 120 chains and then without twisting that chain you're going to join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. So I'm going to go ahead, chain my 120 chains. If you need to change the size of your beanie, there's no uh, stitch counts in particular that you need just um, chain the desired width um, or circumference I should say and then plus a little bit because when you work into this uh, chain in the thermal stitch it will shrink a little bit so go ahead chain 120 and then meet me back here once you have your foundation chain worked uh, you're going to join without twisting your chain with a slip stitch. Stitch. So I just like to run my hand down along the chain, make sure it's not twisted in any place, and then when you come down to the bottom, you're going to join. When you're joining with a slip stitch, we're going to join into the back loop only of our chain. So you see the top of the chain here. Let's see if I can get it better there. It's kind of hard to see here, but you have this V stitch. You're going uh, the top of the stitch is a V. You're going to insert your hook under the back loop only, which is that loop that's furthest away from you. And then join with a slip stitch. We're now going to work round one. You're going to chain one and then begin by working a single crochet into the back loop only of that same stitch as joining. So just work a single crochet into that back loop only. You're then going to continue working in the back loop only working a single crochet in each chain. 
So working in the back loop only, single crochet in each chain stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch under both loops. Now once you come all the way around, your work is going to look like this. Once again, make sure that it is not twisted and you're going to join with a slip stitch and I just worked under both loops into that first stitch. Now you will see in my written comments um, in the written pattern at this time you're going to take your stitch marker and we're going to mark that stitch that we just worked in inserting our stitch marker through the front loops of the stitch we just worked into and the chain stitch down below. Okay, so you'll want to work to insert your stitch marker once again in through the front loop only of the stitch you just worked and the chain stitch down below. Okay, so the reason why we're going to do this is because we're going to turn our work, we're going to work the thermal stitch, and sometimes when you do that, this stitch gets lost and so then you end up uh, losing stitches throughout your hat and you don't want that to happen. So you can then chain one and we're going to turn our work. Now when I'm working this first row of thermal stitches I kind of like to have my work um, not quite turned all the way around but vertical so that I can see these stitches easily. I have the back of my work here which looks like, well it's now the front loops. If I turned my work completely it would be the two back loops only. But because I've only turned it so it's vertical as the two front loops. I'm now going to work what's called the thermal stitch. To work the thermal stitch you're going to insert your hook through the back loop only which it's facing me at the moment, so it's the front loop, but the back loop only, because it would be on the wrong side of your work, of uh, the stitch you just worked, and then down into the same back loop of the chain stitch that you worked in your foundation chain. In this first row, it is harder to see, uh, simply because you're just kind of getting started and it's a little bit more finicky, but it's the back loop only of the stitch just worked, and then keep going down right below it into the back loop only of the foundation chain. You're then going to yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through your two loops. So this is what it's going to look like when it's facing you and then the back side. You're going to continue working those thermal stitches all the way around. So in the next stitch now the stitch just worked, back loop only, down into your foundation chain, back loop only, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. So you can see why kind of holding it vertically with the loops facing you is a little bit easier uh, than if you had turned it backward. As you get used to working the stitch, uh, you can certainly turn your work all the way uh, and then you'll see like you're working into the back loops only. So continue to work the thermal stitches all the way around and then meet me back here. At the end of this round we are going to change color in our final stitch and I'll show you how to do that when I come around. Now when you come around uh, all the way here in your round two to your final stitch, you'll have marked it with your stitch marker. So it's easy to see those loops that you have to un insert your hook under. In this final stitch, we're also going to switch to our color B. So to do that, you're going to insert your hook under those last two loops, yarn over and draw up a loop, 
you can then drop your color A, pick up your color B, place it on your hook, and pull through. Next, simply just pull those a little bit tighter. You can then remove your stitch marker. And then using your color B, join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. Again, I work under both loops. Chain one, then take your stitch marker again and you're going to insert your stitch marker through the front loop of that stitch and the front loop of the uh, stitch that is two rows below. So on my thing here, I'll just use my scissors to point out those two uh, loops there and the next stitch you can see you have two loops here on the front of your work. When we turn our work those will go toward the back but you're inserting it through those loops of the stitch that you just joined in and the stitch on the row below. You can then take your scissors just fasten off your color A and uh, you can weave that in later on. You've chained one and you're then going to turn your work. Now we're again going to work thermal stitch rows. We're going to be our rounds. We're going to work six rounds of thermal stitch in our new color. So begin by working in that first stitch. You're going to insert your hook in the stitch just worked and down into the stitch two rows below. You're working in the back loops only uh, and uh, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through. Continue to do that all the way around. When you come back to the beginning, you're going to join just as I showed you there under both loops. Mark that stitch that you joined in, turn your work, and continue working around. So we're going to go ahead, work six rounds in total. So this is rounds uh, three through to eight of the thermal stitch in your new color. In that last stitch of your round eight, you are going to switch back to your color A. And I'll work my six rounds and then meet you back here. Now once you come around uh, at the end of round eight to your final stitch, this is what your work should look like. Now if you are counting your rounds, uh, because you are working each of these rounds kind of side by side to make it double thick, you're going to, to count them, you're looking at the backs of your stitches, you have one, two, three rounds, and then if you look on the other side, these are your four, five, and six rounds. So that's kind of how you count if you happen to lose your place while you're counting. When you come to the end of your round eight, you're going to work your final stitch. We want to switch back to our color A. So insert your hook, yarn over with your color B, drop the color B, pick up the color A, place it on your hook, and pull through. You can kind of pull those a little bit tighter. And then you're going to join with a slip stitch using your color B into that first stitch. Remove your stitch marker here. Join under both loops like so. Take your stitch marker, place it back in the front loop of the stitch you just joined in and that front loop of the stitch down below, chain one and turn your work. We're now ready to begin working six more rounds of thermal stitch. So this is rounds nine through to 14 and you're working that thermal stitch in your color A, exactly the way that we did it before working through those back loops only of the row below and the row two rows around two rows below two rounds below 
and you're going to continue all the way around. When you come to that first stitch, join with the slip stitch under both loops. Mark that stitch that you joined in, chain one, turn your work, and continue to work thermal stitches for the other five rounds. Once you've done that, you can meet me back here. At the end of round 14, you're going to switch back. When you get to your final stitch, switch back to your color B. Just like so. And replace your stitch marker. In that stitch. Chain one and turn your work. You're now going to continue making stripes, your color stripes, and you want to work uh, a total of four of these white stripes. So you're going to work six rounds in your color B, and then you want to make uh, a total of two more of your color A stripes. So that's my red color here. Uh, once you get to your final color B stripe, so once you've finished your fourth stripe, you're going to then work 12 rounds in total of your color A. Okay, so go ahead, you're going to work six rounds of your color A, six rounds, uh, sorry, six rounds of your color B, six rounds of color A six rounds of color B, six rounds of color A, then six more rounds of color B, followed by 12 rounds of your color A. And again, if you need to refer to the written pattern, you can on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. Once you have worked the final 12 rounds, so that's going to bring you to the round 56. Once you have worked those final 12 rounds in your color A, Meet me back here, and uh, we're going to go over the decrease rounds in our men's thermal beanie. I'm now here at the end of round 56. Uh, this is what your work should look like from the beginning all the way up to the top. You've ended with 12 rounds in your color A. We're now going to start the decrease of our hat and we're going to be working uh, thermal stitches and thermal stitch two togethers as well as an alternate thermal stitch two together which I'm going to show you um, which uh, it's a little bit trickier but it's, it's simply because of the way that the thermal stitches worked. Um, you'll need to do this alternate stitch. So what we're going to do is uh, you've joined chain one, turn your work. We're now going to be working um, one thermal stitch in the next stitch and then in each of the next seven stitches. So you'll work eight thermal stitches all together. Once you've worked your eight thermal stitches, you're going to work a thermal stitch two together. To work the thermal stitch two together, you're going to insert your hook as you were for the thermal stitch in the back loop only of that uh, last, that next stitch, and the stitch two rounds below, yarn over and draw up a loop. You're then going to do the same in the next stitch. So you have two loops on your hook, insert your hook, in the back loop only of the next stitch and in the stitch two rounds below yarn over drop a loop three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three you're going to continue to repeat that all the way around so work one thermal stitch in each of 
the next eight stitches. And then a thermal stitch two together. Insert your hook through the back loop only of the next stitch and the stitch two rounds below, yarn over and draw up a loop into the next stitch. Insert your hook in the next and the back loop only of the stitch two rounds below, yarn over, drop a loop, three loops yarn over through and pull through all three. Eight thermal stitches followed by a thermal stitch two together all the way around and join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of round uh, one for your decrease I have uh, worked eight thermal stitches. I'm working my final two together. We're going to continue working in our color A. So you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Mark that stitch. Chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work uh, thermal stitches and thermal stitch two togethers, except this time we're going to work an alternate alternate thermal stitch two together because what's happened when we've worked uh, in the back loops only, it means we now have less stitches on one side of our fabric than we do on this other side. So we have to kind of even them off. So we're going to start off our round two of our decrease by working a thermal, an alternate thermal stitch two together. So what I've done for this stitch is you're going to insert your hook under the back loop only of the next stitch and then the back loop only of the next, the stitch below, uh, two rounds below. Yarn over and draw up a loop. I think I've split my, there we go. Okay, you're then going to insert your hook through the back loop only of the next stitch only two rounds below. So you have your two loops, the next stitch two rounds below, insert your hook through that back loop only, yarn over and draw up a loop. So you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. You're then going to work thermal stitches as you normally would in each of the next eight stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and we're now ready to work another alternate thermal stitch two together so again insert your hook and you can kind of see it when you look at your fabric that you're going to have these two stitches directly under one stitch that's up above so insert your hook under the back loop only of the next stitch and then of the next stitch two rounds below yarn over and draw up a loop and then you're going to do uh, insert your hook under the back loop only of the next stitch two rounds below only yarn over and draw up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three work one thermal stitch in each of the next eight stitches and then your alternate and you're going to repeat that all the way around, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of round uh, two 
for your decrease rounds. Your stitches should all be even. You've ended off with one thermal stitch in each of the next eight. Uh, so you should have the same amount of stitches as you do uh, in the bottom round as you do on the top round. So what you're going to do, chain one, turn your work for round three. You're simply going to work one thermal stitch in each stitch all the way around. So one thermal stitch, each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch at the end of this round and uh, mark that stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round four of our decrease rounds, we're going to begin by working a thermal stitch into that first stitch and into each of the next six stitches. So you'll have seven all together. Let me see if I have enough here. And one more. Once you have a total of seven, you're going to work a thermal stitch two together. So insert your hook through the back loop only of the previous round and the round two rows be uh, rounds below. Insert your hook into the back loop only of the next stitch and the next stitch in the round two rounds below. Yarn over, drop a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. You're then going to work one thermal stitch in each of the next seven stitches and then a thermal stitch two together over the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way, way around and join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. For round five, we're going to start with an alternate thermal stitch two together. So insert your hook through the top loop of the next, or back loop of the next stitch, and then down into the back loop only of the next stitch, two rounds below, yarn over, drop a loop, then insert your hook. Whoops, hang on here. There we go. Uh, then insert your hook through the back loop only of the next stitch in the round two rounds below. Yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. You're then going to thermal stitch in each of the next seven stitches. And then alternate thermal stitch two together and repeat that all the way around. So th alternate thermal stitch two together and then thermal stitch in each of the next seven stitches all the way around. Join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of round five, chain one, turn your work you're now going to thermal stitch in each stitch all the way around. So for the decrease in your hat each time uh, after you work your two decrease rounds, there will always be this one round where you're just simply working in each stitch and it just really helps to make the slope of the hat a little bit more gentler uh, gentle and uh, also even the stitches out for you. So thermal stitch in each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch, chain one and turn your work. For round seven, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You're now going to work one thermal stitch in the first stitch 
and in each of the next five stitches, so you'll have a total of six. And then one thermal stitch, two together. Thermal stitch in each of the next six stitches. and thermal stitch two together. You're going to repeat that all the way around, join with a slip stitch in your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round nine, you've joined with a slip stitch in your first stitch, chain one, turn your work. Now for round nine, you're simply going to work one thermal stitch into each stitch all the way around. When you come around to that first stitch, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and then turn your work. For round 10 of our hat decrease, uh, we joined with a slip stitch in our first stitch, chain one, turn your work. You're then going to work a thermal stitch into that first stitch and into each of the next four stitches. So you'll have five in total. Next, work one thermal stitch, two together. And then repeat one thermal stitch in each of the next five stitches. And a thermal stitch, two together over the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round 11, you've chained one, turn your work. You're now going to work an alternate thermal stitch into that first stitch, followed by a thermal stitch in each of the next five stitches. Repeat that, an alternate thermal stitch in the next stitch, followed by one thermal stitch in each of the next five stitches. Repeat that all the way around Join with the slip stitch in the top of your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. At the end of round 11, you've joined with the slip stitch, chain one, turn your work. For round 12, you're going to simply work a thermal stitch into that first stitch and then into each stitch 
all the way around. You should be now seeing that uh, the top of your hat is uh, starting to get a little bit smaller. We still have several more decrease rounds to go, but you should be well on your way. So for this round 12, simply thermal stitch in each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch in the top of the first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round 13, you've chained one, turn your work. You're going to work a thermal stitch into uh, the first stitch and then into each of the next three stitches. Next thermal stitch, two together and then repeat. Thermal stitch in each of the next four stitches. And then thermal stitch two stitches together. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round 14, work an alternate thermal stitch in that first stitch, and then a, a thermal stitch in each of the next four stitches. Repeat that, one alternate thermal stitch, two together, into the next stitch, and then a thermal stitch in each of the next four stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round 15, you've chained one, turn your work, and you're going to work a thermal stitch into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round 16, you're going to thermal stitch into your first stitch and then into each of the next two stitches. Then thermal stitch two together and repeat thermal stitch in each of the next three stitches. and then thermal stitch two together. Repeat it all the way around and join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. For round 17, chain one, turn your work. You're going to work one alternate thermal stitch, two together into your first stitch. and then thermal stitch into each of the next three stitches. Repeat that alternate thermal stitch, two together in the next stitch, and thermal stitch in each of the next three stitches. Repeat that all the way around, join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. For round 18, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then simply work a thermal stitch into each stitch all the way around. When you come to the end of this round, chain, uh, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch.
for round 19, you chain one, turn your work. You're then going to work a thermal stitch into the first stitch and into the next stitch. So in the first two stitches and then thermal stitch two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around, thermal stitch in each of the next two stitches and thermal stitch two stitches together. When you come back to the beginning, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round 20, chain one, turn your work. You're going to work an alternate thermal stitch two together into that first stitch, the first two stitches there, and then thermal stitch in each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around. Thermal, uh, alternate thermal stitch, two together, followed by one thermal stitch in each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round 21, you've chained one, turn your work, and you're now going to work a thermal stitch into each stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round 22, chain one, turn your work. You're going to work a thermal stitch into your first stitch. and then a thermal stitch two together over your next two stitches. Repeat that thermal stitch in the next stitch, followed by a thermal stitch two together over the next two stitches. Uh, repeat it all the way around. Join with a slip stitch into your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round 23, you're going to begin with an alternate thermal stitch, two together over those first two stitches, and then a thermal stitch in the next stitch. Alternate thermal stitch, two together in the next stitches, and then a thermal stitch in the next stitch. Repeat it all the way around uh, to the beginning, join with a slip stitch, into your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round 24, you're simply going to thermal stitch into each stitch all the way around the top of your hat. When you uh, come to the first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Uh, now when you look at the top of your beanie, see that the top is getting quite small. Uh, we are almost to the end. For round 25, you've chained one, turned your work. You're now going to work thermal stitch two together all the way around the top of your hat. So thermal stitch two together in each of the next two stitches all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round 26, you're going to work an alternate thermal stitch two together into each stitch all the way around.
and uh, when you come to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch Finally, for our final round, we're going to simply work a thermal stitch into each stitch all the way around the top of our beanie. So simply thermal stitch in each stitch all the way around. When you come around to that first stitch, we're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of our first stitch. So join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You can then take out your stitch marker. You can then fasten off, but when you fasten off, I'll leave a little bit of a longer tail. And you can just pull that through. You're then going to take your yarn needle. You're going to thread the end of your yarn through it and we're going to use this long tail to sew the top of our hat closed. So I like to turn my hat inside out before I do so. Pull my yarn through and then you have your little hole there up at the top of your hat and all I do to sew the top of my hat closed is simply weave the yarn needle in and out through the top round of stitches. So I'm just going in and out through that top round all the way around back to the beginning. When I come back to the beginning all I have to do just pull that closed and it closes the top of my hat quite nicely. It's then up to you but I like to make sure it's fairly secure so I'm just going to work a little bit of a knot there and then finally weave in my ends. At this point in time you can go ahead and weave in any other ends that you may have if you haven't been weaving them in as you go along you may have some up the side as I do here you're simply going to tuck all of those ends in turn your hat back right side out and your men's thermal beanie is complete so thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to make the men's thermal beanie so thank you so much for joining me if you liked this video uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below i look forward to seeing you again and and until next time happy crocheting bye mm -hmm.